collaborative process. So all the universities, and they will be going around, I think they're in the process now of going around to every university, we are all going to be contributing to this particular um, initiative. Um, I think it's got a lot to offer for us. Um, it's, got a, it's a flexible model, it's a, it's a nice model to use. I've, I've seen their, uh, the, on their site, I've seen the, 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 how flexible it is. I think we c certainly one of the things I would say is it gives us a, a certainly a wider a wider footprint with everything we're doing. So I'd like to just, without more ado, hand over to Bo. I think he's going to sort of talk generally about the the initiative from the Keep standpoint. So can I give hand over to you? Thank you, Professor Pounder, for that introduction. And again, thank you for inviting us and, and hosting us to be here. And also thank you to Lingnam uh, University for allowing us to partner with you all and continue to work on this project. I'm going to talk a little bit about KEEP and what KEEP is, but I don't want to talk too much. I want to allow you guys to enjoy the presentation. We'll do a quick demonstration. Actually, Professor Pounder will also demonstrate one of the products that we've built uh, himself. And then we will hand it over so that Professor Pounder can share more about the Lingnam uh, University. So. Uh, just to start off, KEEP stands for Knowledge and Education Exchange Platform. And to give a quick introduction to what KEEP is, uh, we really feel that uh, this is an appropriate name because that's what we're about. We're about knowledge and education. And how do we create some kind of platform to exchange those ideas in many different ways. But before we get into um, specifically what KEEP is in depth, Something that I'm always trying to emphasize is, is why are we doing this project in the first place? And I was speaking with Professor Pounder right before we started and made a comment that technology, sometimes we, we try to implement technology just because it's cool, not necessarily because it's useful, but we want to make sure that whatever we are doing or what we're building is actually useful and usable by those people that need it the most. So I'm going to show a quick video about why uh, we have built KEEP and what we're really trying to achieve, as well as who really will seek to benefit from this project. So let's go ahead and watch this video together. Imagine the awesomest thing you can, like an automatic grilled cheese maker, or a time machine, or a time machine with an automatic grilled cheese maker. Now imagine who's going to invent it. Him, glasses here, whoever they are, or maybe her. But how do kids like these become the types of people that do things like this? Maybe we should ask this guy. Knowledge is having. Sometimes it's a limit to, to have new ideas. That's the problem with the old schooling, because they were teaching answers. I believe questions are probably more important today than the answers. Erno's cube is a question waiting to be answered. And when the right person finds the right question, something amazing happens. They start seeing the world as it truly is. Not a place to be memorized, but a place to be figured out, flipped, turned, twisted, and ultimately made better forever. Today, she may be an octopus, but help kids like her fall in love with problem solving, and they will embark on journeys to become scientists, artists, engineers, designers, inventors, or something no one's ever been before, but you can bet we're gonna need. That's why moments like this, go, and this, and this, and especially this, are so important. Because there are companies to found, planets to walk on, time machines to invent, a future to be made amazing. We may not know what it's going to look like, but we know who's going to do it. And of, of course, th that video was made by Google because <laughs> they make incredible videos. But I think when I was watching that video, and actually we want to thank um, uh, Professor Ricky Kwok, who showed this at the Hong Kong Youth Seminar, and I copied him. Um, I think when I watched that video, I, I realized, wow, that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing. And as we think about education, as we think about the state of where the education as a whole in, the, in, in this industry is at, we have a responsibility 
to the next generation of students, for teachers, for the next generation of you know, students at HKIED or in other teaching and education departments to improve how we do education, right? Because we've used the same model for many, many years and how can we actually use technology or education or information to improve how we teach students. And that's really why KEEP exists. We don't exist just because technology is cool, uh, even though technology is really, really cool. <laughs> but we exist because technology is an incredible way to empower the next generation of students of children, of teachers, of faculty, etc. So, we realize we have a very big task on our shoulders. And we realize we can't do it on our own, so we want to make sure that we do this together across all the different universities. So, uh, our biggest and most important partner that we do have are, are the eight institutions across Hong Kong that we partner with. Lingnam is one of them, it's UHK. Uh, you can see all the different other eight institutions in Hong Kong that are partnering with us, and they partner with us in two significant ways. Uh, the first part is that they open their doors to allow us to consolidate all the different content, educational content, seminars, lectures, notes, etc., into one platform that it can be easily accessible to anyone in the world, actually. And then the second way that many of these universities are collaborating with us is by providing tools, building other different kind of products on top of our platform, as well as doing different studies to enhance how do we actually do teaching, how do we improve teaching methodology and pedagogy. So these, these partners are very, very, very important to us, and we could not be doing what we're doing without them. The second group of partners that we do have are international partners that are doing work all over the world. And number one of them is a company called Coursera, Many of you probably have heard of them, and what they do is they curate the top courses all over the world, from the top universities all over the world, producing very, very high levels of courses and content. And our partnership actually allows us to uh, create a searchable index of all of their courses so that it's easily available in many different ways. We also partner with Open edX, and it's a consortium that has been in collaboration with universities such as Harvard and MIT. And we also partnered with them to offer not only their courses, but also they provided us an open source platform that we can use their technology. Uh, it's, it's been a huge collaboration for us. We also partner with um, big institutions in Asia. So EWANT is a MOOC in Taiwan, which allows us to index their courses. And as well, there's a, another MOOC called Xuetang, which is based in mainland China that is also allowing us to partner with them and access their content. So with, with these partnerships, we're really going global, expanding our reach into many different areas of the world to partner together, to bring everything into a one-stop shop of education. So hopefully that gives you a glimpse of why we do what we do and then how we're accomplishing, accomplishing it with our partners. So now this is kind of what you guys are really excited to know. What is KEEP? What do we do? All right. So. Keep, we really position ourselves at the intersection of three main areas, education, information, and technology. And the reason that this is really important, this is why we consider these things our, our DNA, is because we want to make sure that everything we do falls in between these three categories. We're not going to go do something different. We're not going to jump on the next big thing if it's not relevant to these three areas. And so one thing that we're really proud to say is that everything we do is focused on education. People ask us oftentimes, what makes you different than Google? Well, Google searches everything and anything, and anyone can put any kind of content on Google. And so when you do a search, you can come up with who knows what. But when you do use Keep, we want to make sure that everything you're accessing is related to education and the highest quality. Same with information. We want to make sure that all the information and analytics are accessible. And then, of course, we are highly, highly excited about using technology to bring all these different parts together. And so that's our DNA. And then how does this DNA really translate into what we do? Well, this is what we call the Keep Education Cloud. And I'm going to describe the four pillars here very quickly for us. The educational content, educational information, the MOOC LMS integration, as well as the functional modules. And, and I'm going to go through just a couple quick scenarios for each of them to, to kind of give you a taste of what we're doing, what we're really aiming for as we develop this KEEP system. So for the educational content, let's say 
um, you as a teacher are instructing a student and you're telling the student, I, I would like you to find other additional resources on the same topic of this course that are supplementary to what we're learning in this course. Well, what would the student usually do? Google, go to Wikipedia, and look up the very basic information. And everyone, most students will probably come up with the same information, duplicate it over and over again. Well, what we really want to do is, is bring all the relevant educational information within our partners, the eight institutions as well as the international partners, to consolidate all the educational um, content so that if a student would like to find something, for example, say on Chinese literature or Chinese language, they can very easily find that information by searching on our platform. So that's what really educational content is trying to do. We're trying to bring together all the different content in a very relevant way that's easily accessible by students and teachers alike. For educational information, uh, another scenario that has come up in our discussions with many educators is how can I, how can I really understand the learning patterns and behaviors of students? How can I know that they're performing well or if that they're understanding the material or if they're just skipping through the video lectures that I post online and they fast forward it and I don't, they don't really listen to it? Well, one thing we really emphasize is that data is so important to developing and improving the quality of education. How can you improve something if you can't measure it? Is that correct? And so one thing that we're really wanting to do is as we combine all the different elements of education, how can we track, how can we collect data, how can we understand learning patterns and behaviors so that we can feed that information back to the universities, to the professors, to the teachers, so that they can make better judgment and calls on how they want to improve their curriculum, their courses, and their universities. And that's the second part. The third part is the MOOC and LMS uh, integration. And this is a, a buzzword that the education industry has been using a lot. But one of the difficulties is, you, as you know, uh, MOOCs oftentimes have very high drop-off rates. And our purpose as KEEP is not just to be another MOOC, and it's not just to be another LMS. And what we're really wanting to do is for many teachers and for many institutions that don't have access to learning platforms, that don't have access to any kind of e-learning systems, we want to provide them the best opportunities that they are able to have. And so on our platform, and um, William will give a demonstration of this uh, in a couple minutes, but what, what we're really trying to do is give access to as many different platforms as possible so that based on what your content as a teacher um, based on what your teaching style is, based on what your methodology is, that you have access to the best platform possible. And so something that we've done so far is integrate a tool called Moodle, as well as another tool called Open Edix that teachers can use for free and upload their courses and content, and actually developing plugins so that they can do analytics and tracking and things like that. So that's the third part. And then the last part, which is um, in a very, very exciting section, is the functional modules part. And this is Imagine iTunes as an app store and the iPhone as a platform. And what we really imagine Keep to be is a platform for educators and educational minded developers to build tools on top of Keep. And so when we offer the basic framework, we really imagine this to be an ecosystem that anyone with a, a, a need or something that they're really wanting to do to meet a particular problem that they're facing, to develop a tool that can be placed on this platform, that could be shared across the entire ecosystem. And that's something that we're really hoping to do. And all of this, even though they might seem as very separate sections, we believe that all of these are combined together. And so if you look in the middle, we have something, uh, a little Keep logo, we love our little Keep logo, that's surrounded by search, data analytics, social, mobile, and recommendation engine. And those are the key components that are really gonna connect these four pillars together that these four pillars are not going to be separate components, but when you con connect them together, you link them together, you collect the data from them all together, and that's how you're really going to produce exciting improvements in education space. Um, so how does that actually look in terms of a product that we build? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about our work. I'm going to go do a very, very brief overview of these products and then hand it over to William to do the demonstration. So we have four products, Keep Search, Keep Catalog, Keep Course, and Keep Poll. Keep Search is our search engine that, like I mentioned before, it really indexes all of the best educational content available to us through our eight partner universities as well as our international partners such as Coursera 
you want, Shuntang, Open Edx, etc. Keep Course is our, or sorry, Keep Catalog is our catalog of all the tools. And this is related to what I was talking about when we were sharing about functional models. So what functional models and what Keep Catalog is really doing is providing an online community where educators and even students can share about what the best tools in education that they're using. So by category or by whatever department that they're part of, philosophy or arts or humanities or social sciences, they're able to share, this is a really great tool that I've been using in my classroom. I've been experimenting with it. They can share recommendations and feedback and ratings and share with one another what are the best practices that they have for using different particular tools. Next would be Keep Course. Again, I mentioned this already before, but it's an aggregator of all the different courses available within Hong Kong right now. And we're really excited that you can use one box to search and find any course that you want on a particular topic. And then finally, Keep Poll, which Professor Ponder will do a quick demo of. It's a real-time polling system that allows and engages students right in that moment. And actually, something that we're doing, hopefully, that will be very exciting, that is an adaptation of this tool, is how can teachers take attendance as well in the classroom using this? So all of these things, we're really hoping that, and actually we're doing right now, developing these on different devices that are very important. And uh, Raymond will share a little bit, but we recently launched an app in, in the App Store for Keepole, and we're very excited to share with you that. But really, the, the reason why devices are so important for us because learning is not remaining the same in the same kind of method, right? We are typically in the classroom, which is not a bad method of teaching, but as students are becoming more mobile, technology is being used more and more in their personal lives, right? I see, you know, 10 years ago, when you would sit down at a restaurant, everyone would be talking and having a great time, but now when you sit down at a restaurant, everyone's on their phones, right? Taking pictures of the food and sharing it on their social networks. How can we leverage those kind of instances and those kind of environments to facilitate learning in a better way? So, with that, those are just a brief overview of what we're doing. And before I go into our latest innovations, I'm going to hand it over to William to go do a demo of Keep Search Catalog and Course. Thank you, Bo. So um, now we'll let you have an overview of uh, several of our Keep product. Uh, first of all, you we'll take a look. We'll take a look at the Keep Search function. So this is the search engine that we built. Uh, different from Moodle, the search engine, we uh, filtered the search result with uh, education about educational resource. Uh, for example, if we search uh, critical thinking, and then you will see the result is courses and web resources about critical thinking. So. You can see it is uh, quite different from the Google, which includes everything. And then you can f further filter the search result by, for example, the Langdon University. And then the search result, you'll see these are the courses about critical thinking coming from uh, Langdon University. <laughs> Another function of the Keep Search is the cluster search. The cluster search, instead, uh, besides the keyword search, you will also see a related search keyword uh, on the left hand side. So for example, if you search critical thinking, it will provide you other related search keyword, for example, local culture. If you click on it, then it will further refine search results. So this is a keep search. The second product will be keep catalog. The keep catalog will collect uh, all hardware, software, and products and services related to the educational field. You can use uh, the search field or use the drop down box below. So, for example, uh, now you see the search for about teaching, and then you can click and sorry, this one, all subjects, and then filtered by teaching. And then all teaching related stuff will come up. And then, for example, if we click on Google Drive, you will see what Google Drive is, how it looks like. So if you're a user of the Google Drive, you actually can submit your own reviews and give a rating to this product. So this is one of the features of the Keep Catalog. Actually, if you're using some great educational product that you cannot find here, 
you are welcome to submit your uh, educational product here by filling this form. We will review it and then put it onto our Keep catalog. So this is the Keep catalog. And the third product will be Keep course. As Bo said, we actually index all courses from our book provider, including Coursera, edX, eWarns, and Shutdown X. So you can see here we have Coursera courses and edX courses. Uh, you can use the top right corner, the magnifying glass, to search uh, the course that you're interested in. For example, literature. Now you can see literature courses from different book providers. Actually, we pro also give our own platform for you to host your course. There are Keep Moodle and Keep Open edX. So we actually built some demonstration course for you to have a look. So for example, you, as you can see here, this is the Keep Moodle, and we actually keep our own user guide onto the Keep Moodle as a course. So you can enroll yourself into this course and have an idea of how it will look like. So if you're interested to host your course content on our Keep course platform, you can actually submit uh, fill in the submit course form, and we will review it and give you the space for you to upload your course material. These are the three products, and the fourth one will be Keep Pool. So let's James to introduce it. So I'm going to demo Keep Pool. I requested this because I want to show everyone here how easy it is to be used in the Linglam environment. So I'm going to swap the computer back to a window machine, which is familiar to you in your classroom setting. Now you guys know why I'm not doing it right. <laughs> Last time I were here, the, this fails me. So, okay. As you can see, I'm on window. It is the same kind of setting you have in your classroom. And all I need to do is to sign up an account in Keep, which we highly encourage you to do so. And then I go to the Keep menu here, and then click on Keep Poll. It usually loads uh, quite quickly. And what I need to do is to press this create new poll button, and I'm going to ask a question. And I'm going to create two answers. The other one is great. So that's what I really need and to do. So I, I press submit. And this generates a sort of in class one uh, question for everyone to answer. So now if you can take out your mobile phone and scan this QR code or send an SMS to this number with these two codes, as an answer, and then you will see a. You will see how it responds to my question. So someone has already done it. Okay, that's good. Now we got three people saying that they are great.
that they released a iPhone app as they mentioned and I'm now using their app all I need to do is to scan this okay yeah so this is how you can use the pole in your car's phone so this is how easy it is. I guess I will pass back to Raymond. Thank you. Uh, thank you, James. So uh, just a moment, I need to switch back. As you can, you may see there is a very long old iPhone. Uh, it's not the latest one, but at least it works. I think uh, I will not change it. Uh, first of all, uh, if you are interested, uh, you can always go to your app store. Now uh, you just use the search features and type in Keep Pool. And uh, wow, so you, you found our app store already online. Oh, I'm very... Uh, Happy to tell you that uh, we can have like the iOS version right now, and the Android version will be coming uh, soon, and we will always continue to add more features. Uh, maybe I take bring you take a look of the what the apps look like. Uh, uh, on the top right corner, you see uh, there is a KP. That's my uh, I not in identity. So if you have account. You can log in here, and then you can do a little bit more than an anonymous user. But even if you don't, for example, the student, oh, I just don't want to log in, you still can like, use the QR code scanner or the pool features that we uh, are able to do that. For example, I, there's another question. I can just uh, scan. This is how will the apps look like. And then uh, it will dynamically show you uh, what is the uh, question, and you can select the answer, and then you can submit it. So you see, uh, uh, I guess this student uh, didn't know the Hong Kongs very well, so but other students can like, continue to do all this one. Uh, let me go a little back. So uh, rather than the QR code, uh, as James already showed you the slides, there's when during a full screen presentation, there is some uh, option code answer ID for the student they could enter. So they can also enter it here to uh, uh, answer the question and uh, we also serve because uh, in uh, some other countries they may only have like some uh, traditional phone so we also support like the SMS code you can send the same SMS code to do the programming and also you definitely you can use the web browser your desktop your PC to do the same features So uh, if I'm the teacher, for example, I just play the role of James. So if I need to uh, send the question to the student in or the user audience inside this room, we are now have enabled uh, Bluetooth features. So uh, you can pick any of the question and just use the normal iPhone gesture, uh, do a swap, and then uh, you can use the boss card button here. So every other student or audience install this application, they have their Bluetooth device enabled, and I could broadcast this question. They will automatically <coughs> receive a notification and don't need to uh, do QR code scanning. And this uh, really gets some more interactive uh, response from the, from the students. Uh, besides then the normal iPad, iPhone, or Android view, we are also excited that we have like the uh, Apple Watch version, so uh, it will pretty do much similar features, but uh, I can show you a few minutes video so you can have an idea how uh, the watch can be broke. This demo is for all of you who love Apple. 
Keep Pole is available on the Apple Watch, and we're going to show you just how easy it is to make learning interactive. Here's the main Apple Watch screen. You'll see that Keep Pole is the pretty little green icon. Let's open it. Let's say Charlie is in class and his instructor just put up a multiple choice question asking what the tallest building in Hong Kong is. Of the choices on the screen in class, Charlie thinks that it's the International Commerce Center, ICC, which <coughs> corresponds to 59076, so he's going to tap Answer ID. Once he does that, Apple Watch's built-in Siri functionality kicks in, and Charlie simply says 59076. He hits Done, and voila, his answer is populated in the selection box. Of course, Charlie might want to double check his answer. Then, after he hits submit, the app will show him a nice little confirmation message. Now let's say there are multiple polls going on at the same time in the same area, and Charlie's instructor wants to make sure all students focus on a particular poll. She can broadcast a particular poll to all devices in the surrounding area with a click of a button and Charlie will see the poll pop up on his watch screen. All he has to do is click poll and enter in the four-digit passcode that his instructor set, in this case, 0941. The poll appears immediately on the screen, and now she wants to know who the best emperor of Rome is. Everyone knows that the correct answer is Augustus, so Charlie selects that scrolls down and hits submit. Success! Learning and interaction made easy. Okay, back to Charlie again. This time, his instructor is looking to challenge the students in European history. She sends a poll to him, and this time, the open-ended question pops up asking why Rome fell. Thanks to Siri, Keep Poll takes advantage of voice dictation and allows users to input free-form text answers and allows students to give teachers more descriptive feedback. Charlie clicks on answer text, and Siri pops up, and Charlie says, Invasion. He clicks Done, and as you can see, Invasion appears so he can verify the answer, and click Submit. And voila! His response was accepted, and now he's on to the next question. This is just the beginning of all the possibilities that teachers and students can begin to explore to create a dynamic, more interactive learning environment. So uh, this is just a very brief uh, features we currently right now. Uh, we are continue working very hard to give you more features, such as in, uh, integration with all the learning analytics, even help you to keep track of the keep pre result to do some kind of attendance fee features coming through. Yeah. So uh, let me pass back to Bo to talk about uh, our current further developments. Yep. So just to wrap up, we're going to share with this you demo four. Is for all of you. Well, we're going to show you the demo again, actually. Um, <laughs> we're going to show the, the four main areas that we're moving forward in the next couple years. And we're really excited because these are, this is really where we're going to take the key platform to the next level to actually add real value for educators, students, and teachers. Uh, the first area is in learning and education analytics. And we talked a lot about how really this is one of the main functions of KEEP. Uh, but learning and education analytics doesn't just stop at, oh, you can find out how many places where students click or how many answers they answer correctly. It really goes into an area of personalized recommendations based on student behavior, based on the courses that they've taken, based on the courses that they haven't done so well in or they did very well on. How can we recommend courses to them that will improve their learning ability? As well as, I know uh, we spoke with a couple of professors at City U, they're really asking us how can you use recommendations and analytics to actually craft a roadmap for students to follow a certain row of courses to enhance the learning for those students. So that's one very, very interesting area that we're pursuing. Secondly, gamification. This is a, a, another very interesting area uh, within education technology that we're pursuing. And, and how can we gamify a key platform that will there's two areas in gamification. One is 
uh, a gamification for a particular course. So you can turn your entire course into a game to incentivize and motivate students to learn the material. But you can also gamify the platform. How can you incentivize students based on courses they've taken or assignments that they completed to earn badges, to um, get points, or to earn rewards so that they will be incentivized to take additional courses or explore other areas of learning or compete with other students to increase their knowledge. Um, this is actually very, very closely tied with the third part, which is social and collaboration enhancement tools, which is how can you then take the interaction that students are using on the, on the platform and actually connect them with other students. How can you create a, a dynamic community? And I think that's something that Lingnan is very, very keen on understanding. How can you really enhance the existing relationships that are developed in the classroom? Right? And, and how can you, because in a classroom setting, you're there for a couple times a week, for a couple hours. But then there's so much going on outside of the classroom. Interaction with friends, go, doing homework sets together, uh, tutoring sessions with a TA or et cetera. And how can you really take advantage of those kind of interactions and those environments to really extend learning beyond the four walls of a building? So that's another area that we're looking forward to. And finally, mobile and wearable education technology. We've started with the Keep Hole, the Apple Watch app. But how can you extend that to not just be uh, a two-way discussion in the classroom, but outside of the classroom when students are interacting with one another? How can you extend it to be um, not just with students, but across you know, nations, across countries, across borders, in different areas? So that's something that we're really excited about to take um, this platform to the next level. So with that, we can't do it again on our own, and we're really excited if any of you would like to contact us, ask us questions, have ideas for potential partnerships, or you want to put content onto our site to see how you can explore or leverage some of these tools, you're more than welcome to contact us at info at keep.edu.hk. If you want to come to CUHK in person, you're more than welcome to as well. Uh, you can visit us in our office. And then something we always like to say after you say hello is that you will keep in touch. And we love using those puns uh, as we develop this tool. So um, with that, please go ahead and sign up for an account, get familiar with the tool, see what it's capable of, and we'd love for you to continue to partner with us and follow us as we make our journey in the next couple of years. So with that, I will pass it on to Professor Pounder. We will have some time for a Q&A at the very end, I believe. Thank you, Bo. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, can we get our uh, our presentation up? Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, first of all, I think James is going to be talking about the transition in the sense that what, what we're doing uh, with uh, the KEEP um, initiative. And uh, we're, we're at the early stages, so I mean we're not fully engaged in the whole process yet, but we are beginning to look at ways and, and means in which, by which Lingnan can totally f um, engage with the key initiative. After that, then I'm going to be looking at some of the things that we do in Lingnan, in the te teaching and learning side. This is not totally irrelevant, I think, to our key partners, because our key partner, I should say, because there is a scope in many of these things for us to be able to, you know, to use uh, some parts of the key platform to, to sort of, um, you know, facilitate these these initiatives of our own. So in the past, yeah, uh, the TLC uh, on behalf of Lingnam uh, actually worked closely with the Keep team to post content and create Lingnam users in the Keep platform. So what we did is to post two of our uh, outcome-based uh, sort of uh, resources platform to keep. So if now you go to the keep search, if you go to keep search, and then if you enter in keyword like O B A T L. And you, the first link you find is 
our link, the OPATL website. And if you choose the provider specified to link them, again, it is this link. And this is one of the sites, and then another site is our uh, Leo OB, CA OBE Center site, which uh, Julie is going to talk about later on. And in the, in the coming future, we are going to post more and more courses and software. Uh, at the end of this demo, we are going to demo an OBA software, which we plan to post it uh, to keep. So uh, we, we will, again, work closely with the KIP team in the future. I will pass back to Professor Pang. Thank Okay, I want to uh, now talk about um, things that we're doing in within Lingnan. Um, uh, we have, we've got our sort of camera going, so this will also serve a purpose of introducing the whole of the Keep system, and also looking at things that we are doing inside, which may have potential for uh, for utilising the Keep system too. So I want to just talk about various aspects as a, a refresher for people within the, the university, um, but also, as I say, with a view to possibly collaborating over these. So, the first one, I think, is the, this is, by the way, our own, our own uh, opening to our own TLC website, and you can see that, uh, you know, we have a number of, a number of uh, initiatives that, of our own, which are uh, taking place, and uh, as I say, there is potential perhaps to, to use the, and you see the key platform is up there too. Where are we? Let's just see if we've got the, the point here. The key, we talk about keep here too. So we, we're fully engaged in the process at this stage. Now, these are some of the initiatives. I want to, knowing that we have little time, uh, I haven't gone through a whole sort of singing and dancing presentation here because uh, I want to just familiarize you with things that we are happening in in Lingnan. Um, the first element of the uh, uh, probably the central aspect of our um, our teaching and learning enhancements in Lingnan is the learning and teaching development program. Now I know that one or two people are sitting here or actually on the program now, but this is where we have a uh, a seven month program, seven modules. Uh, the program is one which uh, requires face-to-face uh, uh, -face input from, from myself, usually, although I, I invite experts in various areas to also come and participate in this two-hour presentation. And then we have our discussions for the next three weeks on Moodle. So we're looking at interaction on Moodle. There's a requirement that uh, the participants in this program actually do interact on Moodle because that's part of their part participation. Uh, this is the discussion forum where we pass comments on various aspects of education in, in, in uh, universities. This is to form a learning community we want to form a learning community. In Lingnan, our, um, the, this particular program is a requirement for anyone who has very little experience in teaching. Now, we, we, this is a requirement for faculty who come to Lingnan who have less than three years experience or have not taken a, let's say, a, a development program of this type elsewhere. It's also a requirement for any of the postgraduate students who happen to have teaching responsibility. So uh, the program culminates in a short uh, video of individuals teaching in the classroom 
which we again, which is posted on Moodle for us to comment, or constructive comments, this is not a summative exercise, this is a formative exercise, and we also require for completion of this program for every teacher, even when they're just starting, to, to begin to uh, produce a teaching portfolio. This will be of great benefit to them as they move through their careers, because most postgraduate students want to be faculty. So this is going to start them off on the right foot. It's an enabling program, it's not a, a summative program. Um, we also have something which I was talking to, to Bo about before we, uh, before we started this presentation, and we have something called the Student Consultant Program. Again, this is open to anybody who has teaching responsibility. Um, the Student Consultant Program is where we train undergraduate students who generally have a high GPA. Uh, they are trained in how to deliver good news and bad news to, uh, to faculty. Um, they're paid, so I mean they're, very, they're, very, they're paid more than they get in McDonald's, let's put it that way, so they're quite, uh, they're quite keen to continue with this. We have a lot of students and we have increasingly more and more faculty who want to engage with the students on this particular initiative. Now, it's a partnership. It's a partnership between the faculty and the students. And um, it's, it's a voluntary partnership. There's no requirement that this should happen. Um, but I, I guess the principle is this, that, you know, we can, uh, and I don't exclude myself from this, that, you know, we can go into a classroom and we can think we've done a fantastic job, except that the students don't think so. They're totally disengaged. When you have a, student, a trained student consultant in there who will take notes on your performance throughout, the throughout that particular class, and they're there usually for a semester, um, then you, you engage with discussions afterwards, you learn a lot. You learn a lot from the student's perspective. So that's the purpose of the student consultant program. The person who coordinates this in uh, Lignan is Liz Hull, who is a professor in the English department. Um, we have the online course teaching and learning enhancement system. Um, and I would advise you, anything I say here where you haven't got, I don't give you sufficient information to really picture it, we, I've given some handouts there so you can take them away to understand what, how this works. But the online teaching, learning and enhancement system is a, is a, a supplementary, I would say, to the, what we call the CTLE. And the CTLE is, is a summative uh, student rating of teacher and course system which takes place normally at the end of the course, so at the end of the semester. That means that students are giving feedback on teaching performance and interest in the course and so on, but the, the people who benefit are not that cohort of students, but the next cohort of students. Plus the fact that the, the faculty member has never had an opportunity to improve, because the faculty member has never really known whether this, has got, this, this course was, being, was going down very well with the students or not so well. So the online course teaching and learning enhancement, not evaluation system, is a system where uh, the instructor can enter his course details, uh, has, a, has a, a menu where he can enter in the questions automatically which are, which are already on the formal system, the CTLE system, in, produce his own questions, mix them all up, whatever he wants to do. At the press of a button, he and she, by the way, at the press of a button, that questionnaire goes out online to the students, receives them back, and then he's in a position to look at what's being said, because there's a space also for comments, where students can comment in their own time, rather than being rushed to, to finish, you know, at the end of the class. And this will give the faculty member hopefully um, information which enables the faculty member uh, member to improve so for the students who are actually engaged at that time so that's uh, an innovation which uh, which I would like uh, to see many 
faculty using because it's a again a voluntary system it's not monitored by anybody except the faculty and the students uh, we have the and there's the the uh, URL to enable you to actually get into the system you'll find it's very very simple you don't have to listen to me because I'm the first person that comes up there is, a, is me talking and saying encourage you to use this system particularly for the students because we want the written we want the written responses more than the you know the five five fives and fours 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 or whatever it may be but you can click off that thing and log yourself in and you can use this system you see it's very very simple if you want any any sort of examples you'll see that on the table um, the peer observation scheme is is a scheme where we have a faculty who will want to know how their peers are seeing them in terms of uh, their their sort of performance in the class. I use performance advisedly because this is really not about performance. It's a formative thing. It's not a summative thing. Um, what will happen is that, uh, again, a partnership. The faculty will partner with someone who they feel has got the a good insight into what they're teaching, someone who probably they respect as a teacher, and that individual who is the who is the peer observer will complete a a standard a template which requires him or her to give some meaningful feedback. It's not a case of you know you're doing a fantastic job, and when you come to evaluate me, make sure I'm doing a fantastic job too. It's not like that. It doesn't allow for that. So again, we have a we have a template which is available and uh, and will enable that to happen. Um, we have a faculty mentoring system, again for new faculty and also for postgraduate students who are teaching. The faculty mentoring system takes our our best teachers in terms of awardees. So we have a cohort of awardees who have won the teaching the Lingnan Teaching Excellence Award and one of our faculty has also won the UGC award and he's in the pool too and we also have people who have, who have just missed out on the award who have, who have been received certificates, certificates of merit all of those form a, peer, a, a pool of faculty mentors and they're only too pleased to um, mentor new people to teaching, people who are new to teaching, whether it be a, a new faculty member or a, a postgraduate student, a PhD student who is actually teaching. Um, there is, a, there is a, again, a system that needs to be followed, setting out the responsibility of the mentor and the responsibilities of the mentee. I want to present it to you because this is probably the least used system are, 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 of, the, of our initiatives and I encourage you to take advantage of that because these guys and ladies are only too pleased to give you the benefit of their experience and remember they've won the teaching award so they must know what, what it takes to be effective teaching in the Lingnan context. And the final thing I want to just present here is the focused teaching portfolio. You know, one of the things that uh, tends to happen is when we go through the whole process of academic staff review um, the one part of that review particularly being being Ling Nan which is a teaching oriented university one aspect of that review is very much to do with the teaching portfolio unfortunately what happens is that people in the past have had little little direction on how to produce a teaching portfolio so they come in with sort of, they produce loads and loads and loads like a box full of stuff. And you can imagine that those people who are on the ACE, you know, the Academic Staff Review Committee are not going to read loads and loads and loads of material. So what we have produced in the TLC is a focused teaching <coughs> portfolio which should normally not exceed 10 pages and again for everybody and this will be for those who are uh, taking the learning and teaching development program this will be a necessity they will need to need to start to produce that in order to get their certificate so for them it will be something they will need to do but you know I, I would advise new teachers 
and I'm aware I'm on camera, so that uh, hopefully that's going to be a, be something which is broadcast to others. New teachers need to use this. All teachers need to use it because it's a vital part of you know what um, a vital part, let's say, of decision making in the sort of human resource area. So I, I advise you to do that. We no longer can get away with just being researchers. This is a, this is as a, a a sort of a, a community of of teachers worldwide. We no longer can get away with that. We have to be good teachers and we have to be good researchers. So those are just some of uh, what I'm going to talk about anyway of our initiatives and I just want to share them and refresh the memory of anybody who is here or who watches the video knowing what is available. Okay? So I'm going to now hand back to, to Grace, the next one, right? Let me just check I'm right. Yes, I am. So Grace is the manager within the TLC. Um, yeah, I'm going to briefly talk about the two uh, projects I'm working on. Um, indeed, um, colleagues may already be very familiar with that, so I'll just go, go through it quickly. So the first one is Student Peer Learning Facility Scheme. Uh, we started last year. Um, it is a peer-to-peer -peer support um, scheme. So um, we hire, again, um, highly um, academic Perform with high academic performance students, we train them as tutor, and then they give um, course-specific learning support to their peer students. Um, and, but then they are very different from the private tutorial section students used to go a lot, because uh, our tutor won't just give them direct answers to their questions or help them to edit their paper, but instead um, our tutor will guide them through facilitate, inspire them so that they work the, work the problem together, solve it together and help them how to structure um, their paper, etc. So that means at the end of the day, we have to help the students to develop their learning skills, critical thinking. They only apply to a particular course, but also they can use it in all other district, uh, district uh, <coughs> subjects as well. Um, and um, um, okay, and um, so basically we offer this service um, one Monday to Friday in the library in daytime and also in hostel during evenings. So it become part of a very important um, campus education as well. Um, and, um, and so far we have very positive feedback from both the student and the tutor because the tutor before um, they go to their section they will check online and we ask the student when they book a section they also need to post a question there so the tutor will go back um, I mean tutor will prepare before they go to the section so sometimes they will need to go back to the course they study previously and then to refresh their memory so that at one hand the tutor themselves improve their knowledge as well and um, and also, uh, we collect feedback from the from the students after each section, and they all found you know that go um, meet their need to meet after the section. <coughs> so it's benefits to both the tutor and the student. And indeed, there's a case um, even um, we have a tutor whose um, classmate of the same class go to his sections. So basically, students taking the same class. They discuss at the session together, so it benefits each other at the same time. And the second one is the early alert system. Oh, indeed. <coughs> so you can find the poster here. Um, so teachers here, we really uh, encourage you to promote the scheme to your class and ask them to book a section, especially if you found one or two students who particularly in need, refer them to uh, register a section with us. Um, so the second one is the early alert system. Um, I have a handout here, uh, which you can grab a, a copy out there, or you can download it from our website. So what exactly is is like uh, for teachers? There are cases that you found one or two students in your class. They may have academic issues, maybe bad performance, maybe um, absence a lot. So you may wonder whether it happens to this student in your class or it happened to all other classes 
as well. So um, it's the time that you would like to use the system. The system will help you to send a message to all the teachers who teach the same student in the, in the same semester. And also the program of that students belong to, as well as the, uh, uh, the counselor in the social service center. So that all these people can be, will be alerted of what happened to the student. So when a teacher receives such an email, um, he or she um, you know, can, may not need to do anything, but just keep informed. But on the other hand, he can also decide that he wants to feedback because maybe the student doing well in his class. So it's just something happened in that class that student does not pre uh, perform uh, really good. So that the other people involved can have a more fair, clear picture of how this student perform. Um, um, uh, this system, uh, starting from last year, we kind of uh, mandated all the teachers to use it. So what it means that if you don't have a class, uh, you don't have a case to report, you can just tell your department that this term, everything is fine, I don't have a case to report. But if you do find a case, you have to uh, use the system. And um, oh, and and also, uh, when you use the system, you send out an email to all these party concerned. The student itself will also be noticed, so he know that you are aware of his uh, situation. You also alert other teachers about the situation. Um, again, um, it is a very easy to use system. You can follow the handout step by step, and uh, oh, for your information. Um, Last year, uh, the whole academic year, we, the system have sent out 40 emails involving 30 courses from all faculties all together. So um, that's the two uh, schemes uh, I'm talking about. So um, I guess questions with the donator, right? James, course. Okay, POMS is a OPA system. Uh, it has been extended to the entire university. So I'm going to pay you a video.
Number four, picking the great bottom. The only task for the... I'll just rewire a bit. The mission is automatically populated from the university's central student information system. The instructor will see a list of QA assessment tasks created by the course coordinator and approved by the program director. The program learning goal mapping is also shown here. After going into an assessment task, a list of students enrolled in the class will show up on the screen. The instructor can start assessing their performance by clicking the grade bottom. The only task for the instructor is to assess the student using the analytical rubric. Optionally comments can be given. Feedbacks can be sent to the student immediately or can be printed and distributed in class. Assessing the students using the rubric on screen is the only required work for the instructors. After the instructors finishing assessing their students, the course coordinator or program director can log into POMS to generate reports. contains the QA data for all classes of a course. It shows the performance of the students in all the criteria assessed. It also calculates the overall performance of the students based on a predefined formula. The data is then archived in the system. It can be easily retrieved and used in the QA process. So this is POMS. So if you want to use it in your course, feel free to contact us. I'm going to pass to Julie. Uh, I'm the manager for the Centre for Advancement of Outcomes-Based Education, which is also linked on to Keep, isn't it? So, um, what do we do? What does the centre do? It was established in 2013 to sustain the momentum of um, outcome-based education throughout Hong Kong, not just for Lingnan University, but for all the um, institutions, the higher education institutions. Um, in short, the CAOBE provides research and resources support for teachers in order to enhance the quality of teaching and learning in line with the principles of outcomes-based education. Um, who do we serve? Basically teachers of all subjects in the UGC funded institutions in Hong Kong. Also we aim to help support faculty doing research specifically into enhancement of student learning outcomes. And also we have um, a larger goal which is to be able to serve liberal arts universities and other benchmark partners worldwide throughout the sharing of resources and or resources mainly. Right, um, probably the biggest thing, biggest project that we're working on is the online repository, which um, it's, is going to include both the theory and the practice of OBE. So there will be um, resources on it, such as when it comes to the practical side, how to design course learning outcomes, um, rubrics, assessments, uh, teaching learning activities, There'll be example course outlines and syllabuses and many, many other teaching related topics, teaching portfolios and so on. Um, this is being gathered at the moment, um, so it's not online yet, but it'll, when it comes online it will be linked to our website and to the key website. We also have a book repository, which the beginnings of it is in the back at the moment. We've moved the book, the book repository to the back just for this presentation. So you're welcome to go and view the books we've got at the moment there. I'll take you to our site, I think. 
This is the CAOBU site and we actually have, for instance for the book repository, we have all the titles online here. So if you want a book, for instance, on action research, you can click on that and there's the different titles that we have that are available. Um, now research. We also fund research. And if we go to um, funding, we're actually calling for um, seed-funded projects at the moment. If anyone has uh, any small-scale research that they would like us to fund, you're welcome to um, make a proposal. If we look at our projects page, you can take a look at what we have funded in the last two or three years. We've funded some major projects and some uh, more small-scale projects. And you can find the information about these here. Um, we also publish newsletters semi-regularly, which you can find on this page here. I've also printed out their sets of newsletter copies in the back, so you're welcome to go and pick one up at the book repository. And we also have, um, I've got pages of the book repository uh, inventory, which you, you can take away too if you're interested. Um, we also provide one-off workshops for specific uh, OBE-related topics. In our last workshop, you can find under our events here, which was the workshop with Professor John Biggs and Catherine Tan. Finally, we also give awards uh, for Outstanding Contribution to Outcomes-Based Education Awards. Um, and earlier this year, we gave awards to three teachers and three students for their outstanding contribution to the development of outcome-based education at Lingnan University. So I'll go back to... Um, so, how the centre can help faculty? Okay, I think I'll just forget about that one. <laughs> Basically, um, resources, which especially the online repository, um, plus research support um, and advice and feedback, two-way feedback. So thank you for listening. And if you're interested at the end, um, please, all, please take away our handout, which gives you just a very brief summary of the CAOBE. That's available on the table over there. Who am I handing to me? <laughs> thank you. So thank you for uh, uh, the Keep team, and uh, thank you for the, my sort of co-presenters here. Now, uh, I think this is a time when uh, you can certainly feel free to ask questions you would like to ask. Would you like to? Do you have one more section? You've got something, something else? Okay, yeah. Please feel free to take uh, Probably uh, for the key team, uh, as uh, Bo has mentioned before, we, have, we are not just working alone. We have also working with the industry and all other uh, aspects. So uh, today we also invite one of our co-brand partner, uh, Andrew, he wanted to, to introduce a bit about our co-brand product, Edoa and Keep. So, yeah. Thank you, Just Thank you Raymond, for having me. Um, thank you, Professor, for hosting this uh, workshop today. Um, so, if I could, um, can I borrow maybe the computer or just any computer if I need a web website? Does this work?
Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for having me. Um, as Raymond uh, and Bo mentioned, I'm kind of, I suppose, industry. Um, so a little bit of background about us. Um, uh, my name is Andrew Kwan, and uh, I run two uh, ed education technology software startups, and uh, <clears throat> we're we're you know part of the overall industry. Um, so as uh, Raymond mentioned, so one of our products, uh, I'll just quickly show you, and then go to the co-branding efforts that we're doing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, Adore.org is um, one of our products, and we're essentially, if you're familiar with learning management systems like Blackboard, Schoology, um, generally those kinds of what we call LMS are very good for sort of managing um, class level content or internal school content. But what we realize um, in speaking with schools, especially in primary and secondary sectors, and that's so-called the K-12 market in the US, um, nowadays lesson planning, assessment, uh, quizzes, a lot of these days people are sharing all these concepts. And a lot of the materials uh, that they use for education uh, are being adapted from the internet. For example, they might take an interesting YouTube video or a speech by you know, President Obama, and they might um, formulate lessons or questions around material out on the open internet. So that's kind of what we do. We are a, what we think is a new generation learning management system built from the ground up. That's catered to this kind of sharing and the fact that most educational resources nowadays is both developed in-house and possibly from sort of the cloud out there. So like Raymond mentioned, um, what we're doing um, in partnership with Keep is we're doing a, traditionally, my own uh, startup focuses on a K-12 market. So it would be primary and secondary schools. But being a Hong Kong based company, um, we'd love to sort of contribute to Hong Kong higher education. So um, Keep and us are forming a partnership where we are so-called, quote unquote, an industry partner in the Keep ecosystem. Uh, what we're doing is we are bringing our Adore functionality uh, and integrating uh, on, uh, with Keep uh, in various ways. And sort of probably the next way we're talking about is some kind of a connect with Keep kind of a mechanism. But to show you what we do so we're not just sort of, um, I'd love to kind of walk you through uh, kind of some of the basics. Um, is there a professor here um, uh, perhaps um, uh, would, that, that would like to create, you know, in collaboration with me, some content in real time. If you could sort of raise your hand, someone who's teaching at, at Lingnan, perhaps. It could be anything. It could be, a, I'm, I'm a fluent in uh, Cantonese too, so if you teach Tang poetry, I can also, um, but uh, Professor, what, what's your uh, interest uh, level? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm interested, so I'm teaching, uh, I am teaching a course right. on, uh, on what is it, like human resource management, performance management. Got it. So it's yeah. related to kind of HR, human resources. Yes, very much so. Okay. Well, let's, let's try to create some content okay. um, and, um, <clears throat> around that. So let me first log in. I have a, um, this is fairly new. We, we got this up running uh, last week. So if there are rough edges in terms of you know, content, uh, please bear with us. This is the beginning, hopefully, of a, of a good fruitful partnership. Uh, but I'm just going to log in. Um, I'm just going to say, say it's not now. Um, so this is kind of the standard tour. Um, it might not be. Um, let's kind of hop right into exercise. Uh, let me see if there. OK, so um, yesterday, uh, I think um, Bo's team created some sort of sample questions on our site. But we're going we're gonna to create something new from the ground up. Um, so, uh, Professor, what, um, what topic within HR management are you looking at right now? Let's say, let's say uh, I'm looking at uh, um, evaluating performance. Okay, and th this would be people, I assume, of course. Yes, yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what kind of dimensions you're evaluating uh, these people? We're looking at this stage, we're looking at uh, intentional and unintentional bias in evaluation of individual performance. The boss evaluating the, the, the employee. I see. Okay, and can you give me, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work with that, and then maybe going forward, you know, I'll ask for more information from you. Yeah. But let's just say um, intentional uh, biases. Yeah. 
in uh, biases in performance evaluation. And description will say uh, there are um, this lesson slash exercise. Um, uh, you know, I'm just creating this on the fly, so if uh, the wording is not perfect, please excuse me. Discusses biases in um, uh, in performance slash HR evaluation. And subject, this is kind of interest, really interesting, so I'll say other. It's kind of not the classic um, subject. And grade level, since this is a, a higher ed institution, we're just going to say kind of college university, or even maybe... It is a kind of post-grad, grad school. Yes. And manual, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that out later, but what's cool about this uh, system that we can show in partnership with KEEP is um, each unit you create is kind of like a page. So it's like a Facebook page. It can be a lesson plan, it could be an exercise, it could be a quiz. It's kind of up to you. We, we're just kind of infrastructure, we think of it. And if you want to link up different pages, you put them in so-called sets. So, Professor, what kind of, let, let's just say this is, uh, your course name is um, performance, management. performance Management. So, I'll just, uh, um, actually, I'll, I'll, just put in, I'll just put in an existing thing, for, and I'll move it so we can, I can show what's going on. Um, so, we need a cover photo for this uh, kind of uh, page. So, I'll just Google Performance Management, see what it comes up, right? Um, well, a lot of times you would kind of use your custom image, but for the sake of kind of time, let's just stick to uh, what we can find. And we can tag things so we can discover them and search for them later. So I'll just say performance management, HR, uh, 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 maybe um, evaluation, uh, maybe 360, is it 360, uh, 360 review, um, kind of whatever tags you want. And all right, um, so Professor, what kind of, um, can we talk a little bit more about sort of unintentional bias? Yeah. What are some of the main the examples or categories or okay. what types of yeah, unintentional? Uh, we talked about uh, stereotyping. Sorry? Stereotyping. Stereotyping, okay, I see. We could talk about um, uh, we can talk about um, halo, halo effect. Okay. Let, let's be a little, uh, if we, we could scope a little bit. So stereotyping, let's create some content around stereotyping since we all kind of understand it. So I, I guess there would be ra uh, ratio, uh, gender, uh, age. Age. Um, you would also have similarity, similarity to the uh, boss. boss. Okay, cool. Um, so this is, this is kind of the, the basic notes that I'm gonna, I am got from Professor to sort of pick his brain so we can create something that relates to him. Um, <clears throat> so, um, well, let's just for the sake of demo, uh, we're going to hop over to YouTube. And there are all these interesting videos of like kind of a bad boss, right, and all these sitcoms. Um, I'm just going to say, Raina, I'm just going to use you for now. Um, <laughs> um, so I'll just say, uh, bad boss. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, this is just an example. If you're, if you're in the higher end, you'll probably create or embed your own video. But for the, for the sake of time, um, so, so kind of. Uh, a brand new study out may confirm what many work of his have got for a long time. The boss just doesn't listen. Yeah, so this is a uh, CBS is a huge. Uh, yeah, the um, power of boss has the less likely he or she is to take advice. So all through a relationship. So. Let's just kind of say, so well, what I did is I copy and pasted the video uh, from YouTube and I click insert. And all of a sudden it's em embedded as part of my exercise, right? So I'm going to say there are a few, um, there are various types of unintentional, uh, or, or just say hidden biases. Unintentional uh, hidden biases. In, um, in evaluating, in performance evaluation, right? Since that's your area. Um, uh, let's just say in class you had a, you'd create a quick assessment and you'll say which of the following is not uh, a hidden bias. Right? Might not be semantically very correct, 
but let's just kind of go from there just to demonstrate what the what the plumbing looks like. Um, ratio, gender, age, similarity, boss. So now there are various ways you can kind of add an assessment material. You can you can add in videos, you can add in images, and uh, you can you know put in answer boxes. You can put in multiple choices. And the cool thing about the system is everything is kind of self graded if you want it to be. If you want to manual grade things, by all means. Depends on the nature of it's just infrastructure. So uh, we mentioned I think age, uh, gender, r uh, ethnicity, race and ethnicity, and let's just put in one that has no hidden bias, or very few, like uh, maybe um, color of your shoe. It's just hypothetical, right? Okay, and we know the answer is color of your shoe, right? Unless you have a boss who happens. But we're talking about in general case, okay? So once you do this, it's uh, voila, you see it in this kind of, what you see is what you get, kind of an editor. Um, you, um, you can uh, create hints associated with more kind of additions. Um, and let's just say hint, 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 just whatever. Just keep it simple. Uh, okay. And you can preview stuff before you publish. But essentially, kind of, once you publish, uh, it's out there in an open cloud, right? So, um, and someone who interacts with this piece of content would see this, and if they click, you know, age, whatever, it, it would show it's, it's the wrong answer, and so forth. And if you get color of your shoe, of course you, you know, it's, you know, it's the right answer. What's really cool is you can throw all these social elements around the content. So, as as we mentioned just now. Um, you can, um, it's not just what you create, but it's what the, uh, yeah, may confirm what many. Okay. Um, it's not just what you create, but you can imagine if you, your other, other teachers in your university or other people all around Hong Kong or possibly even in the world create all this content, you can, what we call collect, you can look at people's content, you can collect them, put it in your own, what we call set, let's just say favorites, we'll just call favorites. And when you see things you like, you put them in favorites. And it's the analogy is kind of like a playlist. If you think of a set, it's what we call playlists. And the cool thing is you can all of a sudden, you can integrate this more deeply into your learning by so-called assigning this work. So here we click assign. And it prompts me to create my first class. So we'll just say this is uh, Ling Nan uh, Keep Seminar. And the description will just keep it simple. Uh, cool folks. Um, again, kind of, um, and there are, there are additional things you can do around this. But essentially, once you have, um, you can create, collect, share, discover different contents, pieces of micro contents. You can organize them by creating playlists. And um, you can use it for the classroom in the sense that um, I might hop back to a door in this kit, to the main door, just to kind of show you. Um, because we haven't uh, we haven't had a chance to create all the scaffolding around uh, around it, uh, uh, our our keep uh, version yet. Um, essentially, um, what you'll see what you'll see is kind of this is my demo account. Um, I have some demo classes here. Um, once you like have tons of um, so uh, uh, you know, uh, here is kind of like a set, a playlist of things uh, on kind of, uh, uh, shall we call y-axis. On the x-axis is all your students. So you can assign kind of work to them once and whatever they do, uh, exactly how they answered it, all this is available and, and, you know, and, and the analytics can be surfaced to the classroom owner. Um, so it's kind of a, a whole set solution that's kind of an LMS. Uh, but uh, kind of what we, we really think in, in the future world where content is no longer siloed in a single school, but shared across schools, shared across communities, geography, where people can connect with one another, where they can form communities around content, where they can give feedback on content and share, dynamically remix them, and um, that's kind of our vision uh, behind a door, and we're very grateful uh, to be working with Keep uh, to bring this uh, in a co-branded effort uh, to the Hong Kong higher education community. Um, 
one last thing I kind of want to show is, um, so let's go to, uh, 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 one thing I kind of want to show is this thing called Adapt, right? So I don't know how many of you are, are programmers here, but in the programming world, there's a system called GitHub. And it has an enabled open source software engineers to really collaborate. And my prediction is um, it, the same thing will happen in the education world. It might take a, a lot longer, but there's going to be a lot more collaboration at the very fine-grained level, right? So right now, when we publish a content, we publish a lot of times a PowerPoint, a PDF. And other people can no longer kind of poke inside the PDF or the PowerPoint to remix it, to use it, to, uh, to grow it. And that's kind of our vision behind what we call uh, ADAPT. So just now, Professor and I, uh, together we, we created, you know, it's all Professor's ideas. I kind of just uh, put it down on, I guess, in the system. So what we could do is well, we, we could ADAPT. Let's just say it's not me. Let's say someone else comes in and it's someone teaching performance evaluation in the United States, <clears throat> which might have a little bit different, right, of, of a need. So what they can, uh, imagine I'm that person, the equivalent of professor in the US. And so what I do is I would click Adapt. And I'll just say, OK, um, essentially, you can, you can real, realize all the sort of basic templates are filled in, right? Because I'm adapting from someone's existing work. And we, can, we, we have attribution to the original author. You'll see a little bit later. Uh, but I'll just say American style performance evaluation. And maybe I can change the description however you want, but let's just for the sake of time, we won't do that. Um, so let's just say we, we want to keep the original video and this, but we want to add one more question because we think it's so relevant in the US. Right? So uh, let's just say uh, I'm an HR manager and there's this notion called 360 evaluation in HR where um, not only your boss evaluates you, but the people that uh, report to you also evaluate you. So with people uh, on top of the hierarchy and people at the, you know, lower than you and people who are your peers, so you can imagine this 360 evaluation, right? Let's just say we want to test, you know, I know the content is not really related, but kind of just for the sake of demo. Um, I want to test whether people understand the concept of 360, right? So I'll say, uh, I'll, I'll say, um, how do you describe um, the kind of evaluation scheme where not only your manager, but also the people you manage and your peers also evaluate you? And maybe we're looking for a particular term, right? Um, so let's just say it's, the answer is 360, let's just say. Uh, you can click, uh, you can either do it as a multiple choice, which we've done, but we can do it as something else, right? Let, let's just say, um, uh, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna say the answer is 360. But I also want to say 360, because someone might type it out like that, right? Or someone might say 360 degrees, right? So the system, once you tell the system these are the possible answers, the system can go and check, right? And in the future, we wanna build more sophisticated mechanisms like, if the word contains this, if it's similar to this, if it kind of, you know, you can imagine it can get really sophisticated, right? Like, obviously comparing semantics gets very hard, but you know, like, you can imagine kind of, you're doing very open-ended kind of computer science-ish evaluation. Um, so, but let's just say, um, but once we do this, we realize kind of, we've created something new, uh, but, you see this little part right here, I'll say adapted from this person's exercise. Right? So it preserves the uh, attribution. And so people can, it's almost like Wikipedia, but instead of having one single authoritative version, you keep having these kind of spin-offs. And people, if, if you preserve diversity, essentially, for your classroom, however you see it. So um, thank you for having me today. Uh, we're also looking for more partners who want to work with us in any capacity. We, we think of ourselves as a kind of a learning management system. So uh, feel free to come by and we can chat. And um, thank you to Bo and Raymond for including me in this uh, presentation today. And I'm very happy to be part of the uh, KEEP uh, uh, kind of industry uh, ecosystem. Thanks for your time.
your mic. Um, let's get a mic from Professor. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I'm sorry I uh, I was I jumped the gun a bit there, so uh, I'm glad I I'm glad that I didn't because I'm glad that uh, that was a very interesting presentation. I can see a lot of potential. Um, anyway, I think this is the time now. We've had a lot to uh, a lot to absorb, um, uh, and probably some we have some questions that we'd like to just uh, ask. Uh, we've got a few minutes before we round up, so. Please feel free to ask either the KEEP team or Andrew or myself anything that you would like to, uh, like to ask. Yes, Ken. So for the KEEP poll, um, the instructor would get back the summary, right? Yes. Uh, so that would be IDs for each respondent. So the instructor can tell which student gives what answer or is oh. there a choice for Anonymous answer. Directory, there is a currently there's a situation where we're working on the anonymous solution now right now because uh, in general, if even uh, the user, the student don't log in as a, a keep user, <coughs> the student can somehow uh, do this uh, uh, answer. But uh, of course, then uh, we are now working with the integration with all the IP system in all institution. For example, later on, maybe in the next semester. Uh, let's say, I'm not quite sure the timeline yet, but uh, let's say, this semester, when uh, the user log into your team, he will also, or she will also need to uh, authenticate uh, the role in mainland university. So then we know that uh, this is a teacher, student, and then so on and so forth. And then uh, when I create a question, then uh, I, I would got uh, not just a summary of result, I can like export the result in a CSV file, file or Excel file, so I can like save it, and then uh, I can reuse it again later on. But, but, but right now, the instructor would only get a summary, but not like who gave what answer. Uh, yes, uh, we will also have a uh, more include probably uh, just like keep user. Probably you will know the email of the student, oh, okay. but you may not know. Uh, which email the student use, I can just uh, create a Gmail or Hotmail, etc. Right. This is the current uh, uh, solution, but now we are uh, introducing more and more this kind of advanced features to make it much more useful. Yeah. And uh, I can uh, see a little bit of our, our, our proposed uh, features that uh, we also know that understand that we'll be taking a tendency in the classroom is uh, usually some kind of uh, helpful assessment uh, method. So we will like uh, introduce uh, attendance features within inside the kit. That means when the student they answer the question, then uh, the teacher will somehow know a summary of like which student have uh, already stayed in the classroom and uh, which is not an essential. Thank you. I guess uh, one of the burning questions uh, is for, uh, for the faculty here. Um, how do they log into the system? How do they get access to the system now? Yeah, uh, so uh, maybe you just log out first. And uh, from the time being, uh, when you go to any of our website, keep people, keep stress, etc. When you have them not in yet, you will see the sign-in buttons here. And when you click here, there you are uh, available for a sign-up form. So you just go there, fill in three simple uh, information, your name, your email, password. Then we will send you the uh, confirmation letter and activation. Once you activate it, you can already have access to all our free services and uh, the possibility during going, searching, uh, submit your courses, etc. And uh, particular for courses and for catalog, uh, we would all really want welcome you to submit your contents and what kind of like software products you use in teaching. Because uh, frankly speaking, I'm a computer scientist or programming scientist. I don't have much experience in like human resources, performance duration. I don't know what tools I should use for this kind of teaching or learning in human resources. 
or maybe statistics, math, art, literature, etc. So uh, you are welcome to like uh, sort of join our key community to share your experience, your expertise to all of the users uh, in Hong Kong or possibly to the whole world. If I may, I'll just uh, ask them one more and then I'll throw it up to other, other people. But I think we, we have been accustomed in the UGC to operate independently uh, with our independent developments. And, uh, and so we have various sort of plans and so on which uh, are based on what we feel we need in our particular environment. Uh, is there anything uh, that we need to do specifically that will facilitate this integration. Is there any particular technicalities or so on that are required for integration with the key per system? Uh, uh, although like CHK, we are taking the lead in German such a platform to help to the e-learning sector, but uh, what makes this platform usable to all teachers, valuable to all the students and audience is uh, the content. We probably will have some kind of learning and data features, but without your contribution of the content or without the engagement with the students, we do not have the real data to process, to do modeling, and to demonstrate how this system works. So uh, probably in the current stage, uh, we could uh, encourage uh, more teachers and your student to uh, take part, use our services, uh, try to, it may not take the whole courses, we are not going to transfer all your whole course to the key platform, but if, for example, if there's one lecture or there's two lectures, you tutorial, you want to try a new kind of uh, teaching and learning methodology, you are feel free to like using the key platform uh, create a very simple course module or using uh, Andrew's product, Edoa Keep, to create a very easy assignment to see how the student uh, respond. For example, the pool. Uh, usually, you want to ask a question in classroom. There is hard to count the head count or raise your hand, etc. Or probably uh, this is hard for you to collect information. But with this kind of modern technology, our uh, platform, uh, if you want, if you can use that, we can collect more data and we do the analysis and we can uh, user give you back the things you want and you, you call, call some of like, give us your feedback on the platform, on the system or what kind of information you want. What kind of like learning and you take that you uh, can uh, take use of the system and help you to improve your teaching method or how to improve the student's performance. It's just, uh, it doesn't really uh, take a very difficult role. For example, just like in here. Even if you go to a seminar, you go to a presentation, you can just like uh, uh, you ask a question, any question, any Q and A section. Uh, the traditional way you ask this is just like this one, and uh, you know some student they they want don't want to like waste their hand and they're very shiny and then probably they will just like uh, send us an scope and answer it, and then uh, all this information uh, as I said before it can be like safe. So uh, after the seminars, you can like for time next week, when you have time, you can like go through the question the student asked and then think of it. For example, uh, what can I prepare for the next lecture? Okay, so they ask this kind of question. So oh, I can maybe teach a little bit more on that topic or oh, I found that difficulty of that video or that section. <coughs> That's great, but um, yeah, that's why I want to ask. Uh, why I ask whether we actually can tell the identity of the respondent? Because like in, in my classes, I gave uh, I'll give a participation credit. So if students ask questions or answer questions, mm -hmm. then I manually check oh this student did something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, well, of course, sometimes it's not fair. I see twenty hands. I can only 
like uh, choose fire, yeah, yeah. okay? Or sometimes it's um, difficult to keep track, uh, to stop and then try to like identify the person. So um, if I actually can see the questions uh, online directly and then afterward I can also see them, then I can yeah. give them credit duly. But at the same time, then I, I think they should also have a choice to hide the identities if I ask some questions just to act, to get the general general yes. idea so that uh, maybe you could have one one mode where the student after login then uh, could show the identities the other mode is just hit the button then they could remain anonymous um, and, and also like for identity picking then um, it's not just their self somehow hide you make how to make sure, make sure it's the, the same person okay so I just say I am someone else. So if uh, maybe it's linked to their university email account, mm -hmm. then in every class, then the password will be sent to the email account. Then the person has to be there to get the password in order to validate the, all the answers for this particular class. So things like that. Yeah, well, thank you for your comments. And, uh, that's not really interesting thinking because while, while we are thinking, we just want to make to be a general public user, we don't really think that much. Uh, first, I'm not your question about uh, uh, identity for the question. Yes, uh, we do have live tracking of the who wrote the question and who answered the question. So this is possible. Uh, actually, we we now like training some AP testing on maybe previously there is a sum, just a summary. Then probably if uh, there will be a user account information. And for the attendance part, because like uh, there's one tricky point that is. No matter how well you do the security, the student probably will think of like way to like uh, try to overcome your uh, checking. Even if you need time to bring their identity card to like do a scanning, then they will let's just bring to their friends and such etc. But uh, what we do is like we try to use the technology. For example, we can identify the user account. We can identify their device etc. To enhance that. And there is uh, one more e features we may probably uh, we are thinking and working on is like the geographic information indoor. It's the IP card, the ID current that we have by Apple and Android. So, for example, in this room, uh, we will have a tracking device, uh, just a Bluetooth device actually. So when the student uh, walk in this room, we need to physically present with his mobile, his account, and get contact with wireless content of course so with the Bluetooth device then he will be able to do that attendancy uh, taking <coughs> uh, the question. So uh, we, we're trying to do uh, different module, different uh, parameters to allow the student to adopt <coughs> by the services in any circumstances. A very free new seminar asking uh, a question or just I want to do a quick survey in the classroom or I want to take a tendency, or even later on we can do a quiz. But I do think what you said is very good feedback, because I understand that many teachers do want to collect data and analytics, but also sometimes want to allow the students to remain, remain anonymous in whatever classroom setting that they want to be. And to take that to the next level would be great to potentially, if you have online courses, if you're, you could potentially have students from different institutions taking the same course together. And you can see analytics based on which students from which institutions are taking this course. Actually, I, and our suggestion is one way to quickly increase the content would be if you actually assign the content development as homework to students. So it's like we do research paper right now. So we ask students to write research papers. Instead of writing research papers, so they would develop certain modules. And then the instructor just grade those modules to give them credit. And then they could later post those modules. Genius idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. If you have students that you know that would be able to do it, please let us know. We would love to test that out. And just to kind of go back to Professor Pounder's comment on breaking barriers between universities, something, this is kind of a dream for us, but to be able to, right now we don't have any accreditation or we're not able to uh, uh, grant students official credit for taking a course. But in the future, it would be an amazing possibility to see if, if one student from, for example, Linnan University could take a course offered by a CUHK professor and actually receive credit for that course. To be able to build that kind of credibility, 
to break down those kind of barriers would be really incredible. And it really starts with just let's prove at least the baseline, have some content out there, prove that we can get some good analytics, and prove that this is going to be useful and that hopefully we'll create those bridges between those universities. So. Okay. Uh, you've been uh, a good audience in the sense that you've been with us for, the, for two hours, which is longer than we often have our, uh, our TLC uh, uh, sessions. But it's been, I, I found it very interesting. I'm sure you have. It's a really, uh, I think, a really dynamic um, innovation. And I think, you know, the collaboration aspect is something which is uh, not an easy call. But this may be something that drives that collaboration. Um, so thank you very much to the Keep team. Just coming in them a round of applause. Please feel free to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs>